Hi. One of the largest components of the NIST cybersecurity framework is the protect function. It provides various outcomes to protect your organization. This function support the ability for you as an organization to reduce the attack surface that uh, an attacker may see from the outside in the organization or even from the inside if the attacker uh, gains access to your organization. Uh, protecting your organization right, involves six critical um, categories, cybersecurity categories, and they are access control, awareness and training, data security, information protect uh, information protection processes and procedures maintenance and protective technologies and that's your tools ids ips and so forth um, to protect your organization let's start talking about what you need to do and what access control meant mean to you today so first thing that comes to mind when i say access management most often than not, you hear about user management, usernames, passwords. Basically, that entails um, make sure that every user has an account. Uh, there's our, our accounts on the systems are validated and authorized to be there. And the passwords are um, a, a minimal requirement and are renewed or uh, updated every so often. That is the first thing that comes to mind. But this process and access manager is a lot more involved. And here are seven areas that you should make sure that your organization focus on. First is credentials must be identified and managed. And that means the entire life cycle, what we just discussed. That's the first thing that comes to mind, but you make sure that it's managed the entire life cycle from creation, password expirations, password changes, revocation, and ultimately account deletion. If, if you don't need the account, just delete. Uh, physical access to your servers, to your devices is also important. That does not come naturally when we're talking about access control, but it's true. Who has access to your data center? Um, that is very important. Who has access to those systems? Because you, you know that having that physical access to the console may bypass several of your security controls that you have in place today. Even segmentation of network, even um, that you segregate this network and allow it's only it's, you know, finance, financial people to, be act, to have access to financial systems, that will be all over because having an individual access to your physical data center will basically bypass those uh, networks, uh, segmentation controls that you put in place. So that is very important and does not come natural when we're talking about access management. The third we need to keep in mind here is manage remote access. That became a lot more clear with the pandemic that you need to understand who has access remote to your systems, but not only to your data center, but also to your cloud systems, to your cloud infrastructure, how you manage those remote accesses that and who has access and how you going back to point number one, how you manage those, the life cycle of those IDs. Keep that also in mind. Number three, access permissions are managed using principle of the list privilege. Trying that common concept, your security one on one, how you give access only to those systems and to those individuals that need access. And further down to that is, are those individuals only need read only? read, write, execute, and so forth. So you can be as granular as you can, or as you want, or as you wish. But you need to make sure that you uh, apply the list privilege principle to every account that you create. Number five, network segmentation is also part of your access control. And I sort of alluded that earlier, that segmentation of the network is key part of access management, access control. Once again, it might not come uh, naturally part of this topic, but it is. And that's why it's so important to uh, have a physical control um, in your assets because that segmentation only apply if you are on a network. Number six, uh, make sure all activities are associated to apparently an individual and that unique ID. 
the, um, what, what we're trying to avoid here is sharing IDs. Uh, that is, uh, you remove the accountability, you remove the traceability of that account. Now you have administrators root on a certain accounts. Perhaps you use uh, a, a tool that you can move into that account. So there's a traceability, not logging directly to that account. There are other strategies for you to implement on these particular uh, super user IDs. But any other IDs, right, do, do not allow those par uh, passwords to be shared uh, because you need the traceability in case of an audit or in case, you know, God forbid you get hacked and you need to uh, identify and trace back to the origin uh, of these attacks. And number seven, last but not least, based on risk, apply multi-factor authentication whenever you can. I would say based on risk because you can start with your crown jewels, your most important business critical applications and systems and use dual factor authentication, multi-factor authentication to log in into those systems. Either the systems directly, if you have legacy application, make sure uh, perhaps you use a different strategy. You put uh, a behind a sort of a perimeter and require a multi-factor authentication to get in into that perimeter. So basically, if your application or system do not support directly multi-factor authentication. So there's different strategies there that you can utilize. But you start with those systems and then you can propagate the, the, the practice throughout your network. But at least those systems you need to make sure that you start with them because they are the most critical to your organization. That goes back to the beginning when we talk about the, the identify function that you start identifying your assets and your critical assets. So, do you know access control was that involved? There's a lot to, to pack in here. And later on, I will be talking about everything else that I mentioned here today, uh, such as security awareness, data security, protecting systems, and so forth.